I'm with Davina here from Siemens. Tell me a little bit about what you do, Davina. So I'm the Chief Digital Officer at the energy business at Siemens. Siemens is present across many industries. We're in energy and in infrastructure and in healthcare, mobility, etc. And I'm driving the digital transformation for the energy business. Before that, I was doing it for the mobility, so the train business, and before that, um, for the manufacturing business. So I've been in touch with digitalization, but, but across industries. So various elements. Exactly. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, so for business adopting IoT, um, I know that return on investment is a big concern. Can mm -hmm. you talk us through some of your favorite case studies as to who does that or how they do that successfully? Mm -hmm. I think one of my favorite ones and one of probably the most easiest one to understand um, is from the railway industry. Mm -hmm. So we had a rail operator that on one of their routes was competing against the flight for the same route. Uh, they wanted more passengers to travel by train because you know the amount of time it took to get on a get to the airport, get on a flight, check in, etc. versus just taking the train from the middle of the city to the middle of the city was much quicker. Um, but to be able to do that, they needed to ensure that they're always on time and not too late because I would say 20 minutes and they've lost the advantage probably over the flight. To be able to do that, what they did is that they told their passengers that we guarantee you um, a full refund of your ticket if the train is X minutes delayed. And as a user of a train, I would love that, right? But the reason they were able to do that is because we use um, advanced analytics on the sensors in the train on specific components to try to identify failures before they happen. So to ensure that the train is always available and there's never any unplanned failure. And this for me is a classic example of an IoT case where the return on investment was basically that the train was on time 99.9%. Um, they had 60% of passengers that switched from flight to train, so that increased their market share. And that was just for certain analytics and investment that they did within the, let's say, the sensors on the train. Great. Well, we can yeah. take away a lot from that. And unfortunately, a lot of IoT projects find it quite hard to get past the pilot stage. Right. So how can we change that? What kind of challenges do you think they come across? Uh, I would say so the pilot phase is an important one because I think uh, in the whole IoT world, in the industrial world, especially with IoT, we are developing new digital solutions. And to show that there's a benefit in there, it always helps to have this initial pilot phase. But now across industries, we're seeing the same challenge that how do you move, how do you transition from pilot to scaling? And um, based on the experiences that I've had with customers, but also in our own digital journey, uh, I see that there are three key things that um, maybe companies and organizations underestimate made a little bit when they go into the scaling phase. So the first one is in terms of domain know-how. Do you have the vertical expertise to really understand the analytics that's coming out of the data, the recommendations that are coming out of the data, to put it into the context of this domain or this industry? And that needs to be combined with data analytical capabilities, saying, you know, yes, you do need the horizontal data analytics capabilities, but it's really when the domain know-how meets the data analytics that you can really um, scale in, in every situation or every context for an industry. The second is in terms of um, the, the software portfolio and kind of an IoT platform that you need to scale. Again here, I think um, when you want to scale, you do need to have the right tools in place. And I think companies should think of this in parallel while they're developing pilots. Also think of it in parallel, what kind of implementation strategy I need or what kind of tools I need to ensure that the scaling happens. And uh, the third point is in terms of, I call them IoT integration competencies, but what that really is, is combining the IT and OT world with the IoT world, uh, which means you need to have seamless integration when you do a pilot, you're connecting a few assets, maybe some components in a power plant. However, imagine you want to connect an entire power plant and you want to connect a fleet of power plants, not just one, but 10. Um, to do that, to, to scale that, to seamlessly scale that, you need to have these integration capabilities because it's, it's a Herculean task. Uh, and not just the right technology, but also the right people who can create these interfaces, whether it's connecting the assets to the IoT platform or building services on top of the IoT platform. So yeah, so I think, Companies often underestimate these three things and uh, should put in more thought and resources uh, into that while parallelly developing the pilots. That makes perfect sense. And speaking to you as well, it's clear as to why you've been nominated as a uh, key changer. Tell me a little bit about what that nomination, what it involves. Uh, I think for me, so in the industrial world, it's um, the whole digital transformation has come in a little bit later than I would say it has come in your and my personal life. Uh, we've been touched with the digital world a long time ago, a long, long time ago. And I remember when I started my career, uh, I was building machines, so like 
heavy metal, hardcore uh, metal cutting machines. And I remember sitting, and this was while I was in India, and it was more than a decade ago, so way before WhatsApp. So it's going to sound super ancient, but uh, mobile penetration was really big in India. And I remember I used to get SMS updates, SMS at that time, but SMS updates on, on certain things and from my personal life. And then I remember sitting and thinking, oh, it would be great if that machine could send me an update saying, hey, I'm fine or hey, I have a problem and this is how you could fix it, for example. And this was my first entry into the digital space saying, this is, um, why can't we do this also in the industrial world, you know, really leverage digital in the industrial world. And uh, that's what today I call big data meets heavy metal. And that for <laughs> me is the driving force of, of, let's say, driving digitalization in every industry that um, I have been a part of so far. And it brings you, uh, you to us here. So thank you so exactly. much for your time. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you, you too. Thanks.